I would like to follow up on that because uh, I was aware of the United Pension Plan that went away with bankruptcy, but uh, I was one on the front lines fighting for Continental to keep their uh, incredibly good legacy pension plan. Um, so, Mr. Smysek, how are you going to um, deal with that issue as the CEO with such a uh, difference in the level of pension plans between the two employers? First, let me say unequivocally that um, no one, no one will lose their pension plan as a result of this merger. Uh, this merger will result in between one and $1.2 billion of annual synergies, which will permit us to continue to fund uh, the pension plans and continue to provide secure retirements for our coworkers. Are you going to keep the two separate then? Are you going to keep the legacy plan that Continental has and keep the United plan? Uh, Co our, our coworkers at Continental who have a defined benefit plan will keep their defined benefit plan after the merger. Now, as we negotiate on a work group by work group basis with the unions, the unions may choose to negotiate an alternate plan. It may be going into, for example, the IM multi-employer plan. If the, if the IM represents, for example, the flight attendants, it may be different if the AFA represents the flight attendants. The unions first have to, have to do, and the members have to determine which union they're going to pick to represent them. Um, some, uh, some work groups may choose to freeze their defined benefit plan, and then going forward for the future, for future service credit, um, have a defined contribution plan. For example, our pilots have done that already. They froze their defined benefit pension plan. They kept all the benefits they had under that. And then going forward for their service credit, we make contributions to, to, their, uh, uh, to their defined contribution plan. Last year, Senator, we lost $282 million of Continental, but we put $283 million into our employees' uh, retirement plans. Uh, let me ask you, Mr. Smizek, uh tell me what the future of, the, of Houston is going to be in this merger, both uh, the employee base as well as the hub system. Uh, Senator, I believe that the future of Houston will be brighter with this merger than it would have been had Continental stood alone. Because as I said earlier, we are eking out a hand-to-mouth existence. And the hub is a very potent hub, very strong hub for us, a good hub, good flows in Latin America. The hub will be unaffected by this merger. In fact, I believe will be benefited. You'll notice that we've announced two new nonstop long-haul routes from Houston, Houston-Auckland and Houston-Lagos, in part from the, from the future benefits that we expect from the traffic flows from this merger. That gave us the confidence to announce those routes on brand new 787 aircraft next year. Um, now, it is true that there are going to be some loss of headquarters jobs in Houston, just as there are going to be losses of headquarters jobs in Chicago. But that's in any merger, and that's unavoidable. You can't have two CFOs, and you can't have you know, uh, uh, you know, two general counsels, et cetera. You can't have two CEOs. Uh, so that happens in any merger. And you know, we will treat people with dignity and respect, we always have. We help people find jobs. We pay people severance. We're a very good employer, and I think that, I think that our reputation shows that we show everyone at Continental um, uh, the dignity and respect that they, that they're, that they're, that's appropriate, uh, and we're fair to people, and we will do so uh, in connection with any jobs that are lost in this merger. Do you foresee uh, any changes in your very strong hub to Latin America uh, that would switch to other places? For instance, you've got Houston as very strong uh, to Latin America, but do you see changing routes that would then go through Chicago or uh, Florida? No, there, I think there are, there are great traffic flows today through Houston. The merger will just enhance, if you think, just the, the, the north-south flows coming down from Chicago, enhancing the traffic flows, plus the larger West Coast presence that we will have to flow from West Coast through Houston and down. Um, it will also permit us to have nonstop routes we haven't had before, such as Houston, Auckland, and Houston, Lagos that we've announced, um, which are uh, you know very expensive routes for us to do. Those are brand new 787, very expensive aircraft. Uh, but with the combined traffic flows that we anticipate from this merger, we're confident they'll be successful. A last question uh, in this round, Mr. McKenzie. Um, tell me what would um, we have foreign carriers, clearly, that are subsidized, which have made it very difficult for American carriers to uh, compete effectively. I think that has been um, part of the uh, 
problems that American airlines have faced, among others. But um, what do you see causing your scenario where the low-cost carriers are more effective because they have uh, lower costs than the big carriers? Um, what do you see changing that, other than gasoline prices, but um, within the industry system that would cause you concern about the ability for other airlines to be competitive in America? Historically, the number one uh, barrier to uh, competition from the low-cost carrier uh, standpoint has been an operating barrier, access to gates, access to facilities. And so, you know, if I put my, you know, my consumer hat on and, and look, you know, from a consumer perspective, what is it, you know, uh, it would simply be uh, more access. The one thing I'll say, though, is whereas the industry is in the seventh inning of sort of a transformation, I would say Southwest is probably in the fourth or fifth inning of its uh, uh, ultimate end game. And I will tell you, every airline is um, very secretive of their network plans. And, you know, if this were a card game, my job as an analyst is to peek behind what those cards are and see what that hand really is. And as I look at Southwest hand, um, it's in the midst of implementing uh, a new revenue management system. And it's this new revenue management system that I foresee in the next two to four years, allowing it to go into the smaller communities. And so that's really the next uh, competitive change, if you will, uh, domestically that will impact the industry. I'd like to pursue that later, but my turn is up. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Dorgan. Ms. Kirkland, what's your role here? <laughs> 